What are your options for a scoliosis back braces? When it comes to the treatment of scoliosis, there are two main types of approaches. And the first approach is something called traditional treatment options. Traditional treatment options are something that I refer to that are normally referred by orthopedic surgeons or pediatric orthopedic doctors. And this calmly funnels patients towards spinal fusion and surgery as curves progress and get worse. Conservative treatment options are more proactive, and this is the second type of uh, conservative or second type of treatment option. And these conservative treatment options are more proactive and non-surgical. And the goal is to try to treat curves before they become surgical. And if there are surgical level curves, try to reduce the curves below surgical threshold and using spinal fusion and surgery as a last resort. These different treatment options offer very different potential results. Different treatment approaches favor different uses of scoliosis back braces or scoliosis braces because as you want to try to reduce a curve, you're going to build and design a different brace as opposed to just hoping a curve doesn't worsen. Scoliosis braces, how do they actually help treat scoliosis? Well, first of all, let me say that no brace really on its own, like one brace, all, one brace and fits all types of person will ever be enough to treat scoliosis. Scoliosis is a very complicated condition and saying there's one brace for every type of scoliosis out there would be crazy because scoliosis bracing is normally combined with many other forms of treatment um, to help reduce scoliosis. So it's augmented and it helps amplify or help helps corrective results occur greater or more effectively by combining multiple treatment modalities with corrective bracing or with good types of braces to provide the very best results. Not all braces are created equally. Different designs highlight different types of treatment goals. And just because a brace has a name on it, meaning it's a Boston brace or a Providence brace, it's not really the name of the brace that makes it effective. It's the person that designed the brace with the intention to work with whatever the person is also prescribing you to deliver the very best results. Traditional bracing is really strives on just trying to slow down and stop progression. They're just trying to slow down the progressive nature of scoliosis, normally in its most active progressive form, and this is normally in adolescence and normally during puberty. The classic age is between 10 and roughly about 14 years of age. Outside of that age group where they're going through rapid progression and they're and they had the chance of worsening quickly, there's no other time that traditional bracing is ever recommended. They're never used it for an adult case. They're never used in a patient that's no longer growing or skeletally mature. They won't use it for cases that are not growing rapidly. So it's only used in this very small uh, percentage of patients that are going through rapid progression. And then in addition, they have to fall in the specific size of scoliosis, typically between 25 and 40 degrees. Curves less than that are normally not recommended traditional bracing. So so even if you were diagnosed with a 15 or 20 degree curve and you want to act, um, act you know, quicker on a patient, normally they wouldn't recommend it because again, these braces don't reduce the curve. And for them, uh, they would have to see the curve worsen before they would recommend a traditional brace. Once the curve breaks 40 degrees and is considered severe, they no longer recommend traditional bracing either because if at this stage it's already considered severe, they don't expect the curve to, the brace to reduce the curve. So therefore, again, they are just going to say, okay, the curve is already severe. Surgery is your only option. While well, modern corrective bracing prioritizes achieving a corrective result, and since modern corrective bracing, we're trying to reduce the curve, we're trying to make the curve smaller, we can use the brace in a much larger scope of patients. And therefore, we're not limited to that little window that traditional bracing has because our goals are very, very different. The traditional braces, the most common one is something called a Boston brace. It's by far the most common brace. It is a brace that was initially designed to make bracing simpler for orthopedic doctors to use, not necessarily more effective. And the end goal is not correction. The end goal is not to reduce the curve. The end goal is not to improve what we're seeing, but just to slow down and hopefully stop progression. The Boston brace has a, a large number of associated shortfalls. First thing, it's a, it's a squeezing three-point pressure system system that just tries to squeeze the spine and hold it where it is. It is built in the person's deformity and this, and this squeezing unnaturally weakens the spine over the time. It doesn't address any type of severe postural deviation. We're not expecting people's posture to improve or any type of translation to improve. It definitely doesn't improve. It doesn't address the three-dimensional um, condition that scoliosis actually is. It, it really ignores the um, the rotational component and the compressive forces that are happening as a result of scoliosis. 
And it also reduces the lumbar lordosis by having such a long low back on it. It's actually pushing the sacrum form, form, forward and it's actually designed to reduce lumbar lordosis, which could be, could set up the patient for future issues like low back pain and low back problems. Compliance tends to be an issue because it's so big and low in the low back. And these braces tend to get more uncomfortable you know, not, to think that's even possible, braces by themselves are not the most comfortable thing, but it gets more uncomfortable over time. And normally this is a result because curves are worsening as the person is wearing it and as the curve gets bigger and they're in the same brace, they, they find it to be less comfortable. Most of these braces are kind of like mass to produce. They look very, very similar. I can have, I've had many patients come in with two different types of curve types. Their braces look almost exactly the same. They could switch them because they're almost exactly, they look very, very similar. These braces are not corrective in nature in any means, and they're just trying to slow down progression. Um, unfortunately, as a result of these, uh, bracing has gotten um, a very bad rap, and I was actually against bracing for many, many years because of the bad results Boston Braces has put has put that out there. In fact, I was completely against bracing. Every time I used the Boston Brace, I would notice my patients would worsen over time. They would not improve. I was getting better results not using any brace at all. It wasn't until I was getting some data out of Europe that I found out that, hey, bracing is having a positive effect on some patients. So I kind of said, well, let me find out what's going on, and I actually looked into bracing again, and I started using Boston Braces again. I noticed no difference in my results that I had the second time around with Boston braces, patients were not improving. But then I, as I learned that these, uh, these studies that they were doing with bracing, they were not used, they were not using uh, Boston braces. They were using something called a corrective brace. Now the corrective brace I like to use is something called a Scully brace. Now a Scully brace is just a software system that allows us to scan and the, a patient to develop, help develop a brace and helps you take an orthotist out of the, out of the, out of the out of the equation, meaning I don't have to send to an orthotist that's going to design their brace and then send you back, where we can have an influence on the design. But really, the end goal isn't just trying to slow down progression. The end goal is to achieve corrective results, meaning to try to reduce the curve in the size that we see right now. The Scully brace, a corrective Scully brace, addresses all the shortcomings associated with traditional bracing. It doesn't squeeze the spine it actually pushes the spine into a corrected position instead of squeezing it. Scully braces can actually improve posture deviation and deformity, can actually make, make the patient look some way more symmetrical. It addresses the three-dimensional component on scoliosis, meaning rotation, bending, and compression. And it also deals with any type of translation that's occurring. It uses really state-of-the-art scanning, like I mentioned, and each scoli each scoli brace is customized for each and every person, meaning no two look alike, no two can be shared because they're completely different based upon the curve presentation and what we see there. Normally, our, these braces become easier to wear over time because as the spine straightens, the braces become produce less pressure, and as they produce less pressure, they become easier and easier to wear. They're much more form-fitting. They're not as big and bulky, so compliance tends to be way better. And the main, the, the main thing that improves compliance with scoli, brace, or scoli braces or corrective bracing in general is results. Most uh, kids are, get tired of wearing braces because they're not seeing any improvement. Every time they go to the doctor, they see their curves are worsening, where when patients start to see their results tend to improve and their body tends to improve as a result of treatment, they become more motivated to continue with treatment. So getting corrective results is by far the most important thing. And then the last thing that's very important with corrective bracing is it can be used in any age group. Like we're not looking at just adolescents during growth that are, or that are in risk of rapid progression. We can use them in small curves, in large curves, in moderate curves. We can use them in kids that are growing, in adults, in late stage progression. I use them in a wide variety of patients to get great results with people. And the idea with corrective bracing is that it's one component of your program. In order for corrective, brace, corrective bracing to be the most effective, is it's being combined with multiple conservative treatment programs to deliver the very best impact. The person that's designing your brace should be also designing all your therapy, your rehabilitation, your exercise program to deliver the very best results when, th when, the, when the scoliosis program is not fragmented but literally coordinated in a very specific manner where the brace can become a, a corrective tool with everything else like chiropractic care where we use chiropractic adjusting to help realign the most tilted vertebras into more an aligned position with an office therapy to help improve flexibility and flexibility of the scoliosis and range of motion, improve strength for improved spinal support. 
and we can use that in combination with other therapies, we can get to very good reductions in scoliosis cases. Then we send patients home with their corrective brace, and then we give them home therapy, home exercises, and home rehab to help stabilize the scoliosis with the corrective brace in, in mind. When everything is coordinated in this way, that you're not seeing you know five or six different doctors and five or six different therapists, and everybody's doing their own thing, this coordination allows us to give us to give us the very best results possible. The key thing to understand here is not one form of treatment on its own can treat scoliosis effectively. Like I said, the complex nature of scoliosis really necessitates a customized treatment plan for that specific person based upon their presentation, based upon their abilities, based upon their goals, and the ability to get a very good curve reduction. At Scotia Reduction Center, we offer this proactive conservative treatment that's comprehensive in nature, that's not fragmented, and favors the use of corrective bracing over squeezing style bracing because we can design these corrective braces to be effective with our rehabilitation in the office and the home therapy that we also prescribe for home use. And this is why we favor corrective bracing. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.